here's the next stage in developing the landing gear panel for my A10C simulator. I have an A10C gear panel from the company simparts.de. I fitted a flaps position indicator gauge from the company PC Flights. I've already shown the testing with DCS World A10C using DCS BIOS and an Arduino Mega. I wanted to shrink this electrical interface so it would be a, a neat integral part of the panel. I chose an Arduino Pro Micro due to its small size. It's using a 5 volt USB supply and the number and type of IO that it has. I use a lot of these micros. It's my favorite whenever I need something small and easy to program. Do note if you use these that these Pro Micros are available in 3.3 and 5 volt models. So it's important to choose the right one. I'm using the 5 volt 16 megahertz version here. The gear panel has quite a mixture of input and output requirements. There's the switches for anti-skid, landing and taxi lights, downlock override. There's a gear lever position micro switch and the Thames data push button at the bottom. And then there's indicator lights which need to be driven. Three for the gear wheels safe, nose left and right and the gear transit warning LED that's in the end of the gear handle. There's something required to drive the flaps position indicator. I'm just using a servo at the moment. And then there's backlighting for the gear panel itself, which has built in LED backlighting. Unusual arrangement for that. It works well. I'm not quite sure who the manufacturer is or exactly how it works. And then there's separate LEDs for the flaps position indicator gauge. I disconnected and teased out all the wires from the back of the gear panel. I made up a small circuit on a piece of strip board with the Pro Micro plugged into female headers so it can be replaced if necessary. I left the long pins on top of the Pro Micro in place for now as they're useful for testing. I tried to group the wires together into logical sections, the servo, the switches, the backlights, etc. I soldered a right angled pin header onto the strip board to make the external connections. As much as possible, I've planned the wiring to line up with the pins on one side of the Pro Micro, so the connections run straight along these strip board tracks to the input and output pins. I'll show all of that in more detail. I used Easy EDA just as a layout tool, not for accurate circuit simulation or PCB design, but it's a fair representation of the circuit. Just note that the um, not all the colors match between the circuit representation and the PCB on the left. If you imagine underneath this strip board, there are copper tracks running from the top to the bottom so vertical copper tracks that connect all these holes together with the exception of the black line across here where i broke all the tracks and that's represented by the dotted purple line here underneath the pro micro so we've got some standard strip board with vertical tracks and a break along this horizontal line the first thing I did was join all the grounds together. There's several ground pins. They all do the same thing. Um, I joined them together just to split the current evenly between them because there's quite a lot of current being used by this circuit. If we start at the top left of the circuit, you can see the servo connector coming in, these three pins onto the right angled header. There's a ground connection which runs across here down to the micro. There's a five volt supply going to the servo, which is actually tapped off from this five volt raw connection. You can see, just see the wire running along here. 
to the raw pin. And then there's the PWM signal out to the servo, which is controlling its position. That's running down through the header straight onto digital pin nine, which is one of the PWM pins. So this is one where I was able to run the track all the way through to the connector without having to use any jumper wires. So this is the corresponding wire straight onto pin nine. Then running along the top of this 20 pin Molex style connector, pin 20 is not used. Pins 19 through to 14 are the inputs from the toggle switches and push buttons and micro switch for the gear lever. You can see those white wires coming from the gear panel down through the Molex style connector. They're all running straight down the strip board tracks onto these digital input pins. So no jumper wires needed to get those in. So this half, this side of the Pro Micro and these wires run nice and neatly. I can't do the same on the other side of the Pro Micro, which is why there's a break here. And then these pins are jumpered across. Continuing along, there's a ground connection here that's going out and being used as a common ground for all of these switches. There's a ground connection for the gear warning light that's on, a, on the end of the landing gear lever. And then further along, there's a ground connection for the three gear lights. These ground connections jump around a bit on the header because I need to get those to match up with the ground wires on the micro. Next, we've got the LED outputs for the gear left, gear nose and gear right. Those are the three that light up when the gear's in the, locked in the down position. You can see if you trace those back, they're coming through 150 ohm resistors on the board and then through jumper wires to get those back to the relevant output pins. So that's why there's jumper wires running backwards up into the uh, output pins. You'll see I use some of the analog outputs on the Pro Micro as digital outputs. It's possible to do that quite easily. You can figure, you can configure analog pins as digital IO pins. So I've got three outputs going to these LEDs. There's an additional one running out to the gear warning light on the end of the landing gear lever. And then the last ones on the right hand side of this Molex style connector are the ground and the five volts going to the backlights, one on the pos flaps position indicator gauge, one on the panel backlight. Each of those has a ground and a five volt output. Both of those are running through 150 ohm resistors and both of those are going back to the raw five volts on the Pro Micro. Jump it across and then jump it across again here and here. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit awkward to um, explain this on a video with no interaction. It was um, a fun exercise actually planning this out and getting it to work. It definitely showed me the value of um, planning out a circuit like this before you try and implement it because keeping these um, inputs and outputs matched up with the pins on the Pro Micro and choosing the right pins to begin with really made this um, a lot simpler to implement. Probably only took half an hour to put this together once I decided what I was going to do. Thanks to DCS BIOS, it's almost laughably simple. But just going from top to bottom, you'll notice there's a comment depending on exactly which type of Arduino you use. 
you sometimes have to change this definition at the beginning for DCS BIOS. So in this case, the Pro Micro does not use the AT Mega 328 or 2560. So the first um, defined statement here, defined DCS BIOS underscore default underscore serial is the one that's appropriate when using a Pro Micro. We've got the libraries included for the servo motor control and for DCS BIOS itself. Then there are the DCS BIOS configuration statements telling it which pins are being used for which switches and inputs and outputs. Towards the bottom of the list, you'll see in this short setup section, there's the statements that define those two output pins, analog outputs to be used. There's the DCS BIOS setup. And then inside the loop, there's just the one line for the DCS BIOS loop. So really nice and simple, really reaping the benefits of all the work that people have put into DCS BIOS. So credit to them and thanks for that as always. Okay, I've got the gear panel hooked up to the test PC with DCS World running in the background. Uh, much neater now, just this one USB cable that you can see running to the panel and it's Pro Micro providing the power and the signals backwards and forwards. Just a quick run through the switches to make sure everything's working okay. Yep, everything okay, just the flaps, 7 degrees, 20 degrees, back up again, backlights look good, so everything's, uh, everything's okay using this Pro Micro. I'll leave a couple of photos as usual at the end of this video, I hope you found it interesting and useful. I enjoyed making this one. Thanks for watching.